This video will cover data frames. Uh, for this topic in particular, I recommend looking through the accompanying PDF before you get started with the video. Uh, in the PDF, I have two cases. First is just some generated data using sequence functions, vectors, that sort of thing. Um, it's a lot of stuff from the vectors video. And uh, so, so those just you take a couple vectors, put them together. That's a, our, our data frame that we look at for a while. Uh, and then later on, there's a case where I load in some real data and work through some functions related to, the, related to that and take some of the original functions and kind of apply them. So what this video is going to be doing is just using that real data, but applying kind of everything through. And so I recommend skimming through the notes just to make sure you get a really strong feel for indexing and that sort of thing. Just paying attention to what's in the parentheses and how that relates to the output, how to get what you want, that sort of thing. Um, just to make sure you're, you're comfortable for this video and you get a lot out of it. If at any point you find that you're a little confused, there, there are several examples on there. Um, just again, focus on what's inside the brackets, what's inside the parentheses, um, and that sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to go over to this file section, and I see here that I have a file serial.csv. That's the only data set I have in here, so we're going to work with that. Now I've opened up the help file. It says read.table at the top, but really it's, it's several similar functions kind of put together. We're going to start with read.csv. Um, read.csv and read.table are two functions you're going to need to use probably for homework assignments. They're very common to use in just any application. So read.csv will load in data from a CSV file format. It's, it's short for comma separated value. Uh, it's, and, um, it's going to read that into R and make it into this thing we call data frame. And we'll see what a data frame looks like in a second. Read.table is the same, except it can read in text files and some other weird files. But um, if you have a .txt, you're going to use read.table. And if you have a CSV, you're going to use read.csv. So the main difference I can think of between these two functions is that I found that with C the CSV, it's usually pretty good at recognizing when there's a header and when there's not. It's the second argument. The rest I've never had to really use um, very often. but um, header is something that in the table function sometimes I've had issues with text files where it'll cut off a line or add an extra line so um, that that's that's um, one case where you know that that's the one difference I can think of between these two read CSV is very clean in general um, just leaving the default settings is gonna be good for you most of the time so what we're gonna do let's go to our new R script and do read.csv and given that this is my default working directory, I don't need to give any sort of long path here. I just need to say serial in quotations, specifically serial.csv. Uh, the reason it need, you need quotations is because I could make a variable named serial.csv and in that store the number one. And that wouldn't be a very useful thing to read. So um, you need the quotations. That's, that's how R will differentiate between uh, a file and some kind of object or variable you have saved. So we're going to read in the CSV and similarly to vectors and individual numbers, characters, whatever, um, it's just going to print this out. We didn't store it in anything. So um, we can get a quick look at our data. We have co uh, columns X, which seems to be the brand names, calories, protein, fat, sodium, fiber, carbohydrates, sugar, potassium. So we have one column with names, characters, and the rest seem to be numerics. So now we're going to go back in here, and now we're going to save this. So I let a good default, kind of if you just want to have a temporary data frame, is, is df. But we're going to be more formal and name this as serial. So in serial, we're going to, to serial, we're going to store the red CSV data. So all this output that we see below is going to go in here, serial.csv. So now serial, if we run that, that's going to print out the same data frame. So uh, with the vector, I mentioned last time, it's kind of a, you can think about it as one dimensional, whereas this is two dimensional. Before, um, we, need, we didn't have to deal with these column names or anything. We just had a single vector. So we might have had these values 2, 6, 1, 1, 3. And sure, you could give them a name and like have it be a vector called protein. But now we have a bunch of individual vectors put together. The way I like to think about it is your data frame is a collection of columns. Um, and each column is just a vector that has a name on top. So 
Um, there's nothing different about these lists of numbers on, um, uh, versus vectors, just we have these names now. That's the only difference from last time. Um, but they're conveniently put together on the same object, so um, everything is organized together, everything is matched up. Like your cheer For your Cheerios, um, you don't have to just flip through all these different things and say, you know, for Cheerios, this is the second element, second row here. So if we just had a bunch of these vectors, like we had a calories vector and a protein vector, we'd have to say calories bracket two, protein bracket two, but now we can just look at them all across this way. So that's the advantage of a data frame. It's just, if you work in Excel a lot, it's, it's just kind of your spreadsheet format. So um, I guess the first reasonable thing to do will be see how we can index it, kind of like last time. So. Um, before we get into some data frame specific functions, we'll kind of do a repeat of what we did with the vectors. So uh, we're, we're in a different situation here. We have two dimensions instead of one. So let's see what happens if I just did serial one. See here, now we actually printed out a whole vector instead of individual elements. So the default, if you just pass a single number, this one is going to pick the first column. It's titled X, but really it should be titled like brand name or something like that. Uh, if we did serial three, now we're going to the third column. I should, I expect to see two, six, one, one, and so on. There you go. Um, and notice that the way we're doing it right now, we get the column name with it. There's some kind of weird cases when you get the name, when you don't, but here, this is kind of a special vector with a name on top. This is a single column from the data frame. But let's say we want to get a individual element, not just a column, but an actual individual element. So the format is going to follow, it's always going to follow the row comma column format. So if we want the first element of the second row, uh, sorry, the, the, the uh, first element from the second column, that's going to be our first row, second column, 110. So let me print out this data frame again so we can pick out a number to look at. So let's say we want to look at the amount of fiber in multigrain Cheerios. So I have row nine and I have column one, two, three, four, five, six. So row nine, column six. So I'm gonna do serial bracket nine comma six. We see two. So then if we go down to multigrain Cheerios fiber, there we go two. See here, it cut off the, the decimal because it was uh, just exactly 2.0. Um, but this is a, this is the same number. We, this is a good good way to check. So remember, name of the data frame brackets row comma column. Okay, and once again we can use our uh, two methods of getting a sequence. If we want multiple elements, but again not if we want some elements but not the entire column, we can say let's say um, the first ten from that fiber column. So these are the fiber counts for the first 10 serials. The order is preserved here. And there's nothing stopping us from using sequences to index both rows and columns. So if we did one colon 10 and then five colon seven, we're gonna get kind of a mini data frame. This, we're, we took a subset of the original. It keeps the col it gave us the column names um, for readability. And so now we have our sodium, fiber, and carbohydrates because those are the five through seventh, the fifth through seventh columns. And we have the first 10 rows of each of those. So this is, this is how you can get a subset of a data frame. And again, it doesn't have to be a pure sequence. You could just use a C function and list of 10 number, any number of numbers. Um, and you'll get a similar result just depending on the number of elements each. That'll determine your shape. Here we have a three column by 10 row, or 10 by three um, matrix with our column names. It's our data, uh, ten, uh, but in this case, it's it's a still, it still preserves a data frame format. There are matrices in R, um, but if it helps to think of this as just a matrix with names, that's something you can also do. Okay, there's one more special trick with data frames. One of the really convenient features with R is how you can access individual columns. So this is a, we're gonna be using a new symbol here, the dollar sign. Um, now, 
this won't happen in the console, but up in the editor, uh, doing serial dollar sign will pop up a drop down thing I can scroll through, these arrow keys, what have you. Um, these are all of the different column names. I can just select a single one to look at. So if I print serial dollar fiber, and I'm just, it's, it, it's stripped off the name this time. There's no fiber at the top here. It's just a regular old vector that's not really a column anymore. But these are every sing th these are all the values of fiber from that column. So um, the dollar sign is a really convenient way to get a single column or single vector out of a data frame. So I can do I can type in myself serial dollar sugar. There we go. That's our vector for the sugar column. And these are all going to be the same length. Um, this doesn't have decimal, so it looks a little shorter. But if we were to do length of each of these, we can verify that they they're the same. So as a quick check. So serial dollar fiber, it's length 43, and we can use length again because it's a vector. Now that we've kind of stripped, we just stripped this one column from the rest of the data frame. They're both 43. This, this, we, we should know this. Data frames for data frames, each column has to have the same length, um, but that's a good verification. There's one more way we can index specific columns. Um, because because they have these names attached to them, we can still use that row column format, but also use our um, column names. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going to do serial bracket, and again rows in the front. So let's take the first ten rows. So we can just we can see a good list. Um, but on the right here, I'm going to say fiber in quotes. There we go. So these are the first ten elements, one through ten of the fiber row. Now what's nice about this. Is you can also you can have a list or sorry a vector of names so I can do fiber and sugar together. I mixed up single quote double quote in here, but that's okay. They're both treated the same. There we go. So that's our mini data frame: fiber and sugar, the first ten rows of each. Okay. Um, now let's just um, briefly. We'll kind of verify that you can do the same sorts of things with these that you can do with um, vectors. The main thing we want to focus on are logical comparisons. There aren't that many situations where you're going to want to do addition. I mean, that would just be if you, let's see if we do serial dollar fiber plus fiber, print that up, and then serial dollar fiber. Sorry, fiber plus one. We're get, we're going to just see what we saw with the vector. It's going to add one to each individual element. Um, if we wanted to, we could add serial fiber and serial sugar, since we know that they have to be the same length. But in this context, this doesn't make too much sense. What I would want to see is, let's say I want I want to know the serials. Let's print the full data frame again. I want to see the list of serials for which the sugar is greater than or equal to 10. So let's do a comparison. So we saw that when we only included a single number in this bracket that it's just going to give us a column that doesn't do us any good so what we're going to need to do is have our rows and columns format again but now we need to think about this we want a specific number of rows and we want all the col all the columns so um, we're going to need something on the left hand side of the comma that will be uh, our logical statement and on the right hand side uh, something I guess I forgot to mention. If you want either all the rows or all the columns, just leave each side of it blank. So here I said nothing, so it's going to print the entire data frame. But I could say let's let me see the first three rows, but I want all the columns. And that, that's how you just you can leave one side of the comma blank. But this is completely different. If I were to leave out the comma, now this is printing the first three columns as opposed to the first three rows. If you don't have the comma there, you're, there's no, you're not going to be able to really input the rows you want. It's just going to consider in, in terms of columns. So now let's go back to this. So we, we're going to leave the right side of the column blank. Let's, we want to have our full, let's say we want to have our full data frame, but we only want to look at high sugar cereals. So we're going to, we have two ways of doing this. Um, I like to use which. There's really no preference, but this puts inside parentheses. So it, um, to me, it's a little more readable. You could also just take what I put inside which and just use that, but um, just humor me here. We do which serial dollar sugar. 
less than, sorry, greater than or equal to 10. So what this is saying is, let, give me a vector. We saw earlier that there are 43 serials, so we're going to have 43 trues and falses. Um, when it's going to be true, when sugar is greater than or equal to 10. So you see like this one's true, false, true, true, false, true, false, so on. Um, and then which is just going to convert those into indices. But I, I again, I, I really don't need the which here. It's just nice to have it in parentheses. So overall, I'm saying give me all the rows where sugar is greater than 10. And this, this part, comma, in the space is saying just give me all the columns. So this is a subset of the data frame. Um, one really nice thing I want to point out really quick is that you can see here it preserved the index on the, the right hand side. That's another feature of data frames. They kind of have this built in index. But we can see that this is actually the first row, the third row, the fourth row. So that's preserved. Um, it kind of helps if you're if you're noticing a missing row or some rows weird, you can always compare it to the original data set. So we can see here, yep, all our sugars are double digits and we can see which serials are, those are. So let's say I, all I cared about was getting the brand. What I can just do is add number one because I just want that first column. So there's our list of serials that are greater than, that have um, 10 or more, I'm assuming grams of sugar. Uh, ignore this bottom part here, just this is your list. Okay, so we've um, gone pretty in depth into indexing our data frames in different ways. Uh, the last thing I want to cover is are, are some unique functions that relate to data frames. And these are best seen with real data, which is why I chose to, to use the serial data set over simulated data. So the first is going to be this function names. If we do names, of it says an any R object. Um, so we're just going to, I, I can vouch that this will work for data frames. If we take names of serial, that's going to give us all of our columns. Now, um, you see that the first one is X. I don't think it's a very descriptive name. Everything else is in a nice format. Everything's capitalized, it, which you don't need to have things capitalized, but it's good that they're consistent and descriptive. This first variable, not so much. So one thing nice about this names is it's actually kind of a characteristic of serial that you can change. So if I use the assignment operator here, remember when we did we looked at vectors, you can index, get a single element, and then override that element, change to something else. We can actually override our names. So um, here, I just want to change this first one. So it's, again, this is, if you think about it, this is just a vector. Um, our first, this means first element, and then seventh, and so eighth, and ninth. So we have nine columns. Um, we only want to change this first one. I'm fine with the rest of these names. So we're going to only change this first one to, say, brand. Now, if we print out our data frame again, scroll up, we now see that it says brand at the top. So we've actually changed the um, column name for the entire serial data, data frame. We've completely changed, um, like this is a permanent change. This isn't, um, we would have to either read the CSV again or just manually to change it back to X if we want to return to the original. Um, but now this is pretty clear. We have good column names just reading through this list, I made this full into an accident. Um, e. G names of serial. All of them follow a consistent format and they're readable. This is a, a good data set now. Um, now. Every time I've wanted to print this, I've just typed in, I've typed out serial, this is the name of the data frame, so it would print, but there is a much cleaner way if you're, uh, if you have a small screen or just if you're a normal person, you, you want this in a nice format, uh, and that's the head function. So all we need is pass an X, again, in our object. Um, again, I can vouch that it works for data frames, and here's my proof. If you do head of serial, it's going to just take the first six rows by default, of your data frame and print those. So it's kind of a subset, but we're not we're not changing anything about serial. We're just this is just a quick way to view things. Um, now, if you want to change the number of rows shown, if you're picky and you want five, um, just 
we can just do head serial comma five because the second argument here is n and that's just it just you just need to pass in an integer um, for the number of rows you want to display it's going to show all columns by default um, because that's with the way these are structured usually column names are important rows are just your your kind of individual serials in this case um, the the second number here will specify the number of rows So um, we have a few convenient functions for looking at our um, at our data frames. We can now view it. We can now change the column names. There are a couple more um, quick functions to look at. This one in DIM, short for dimensions. This is always really handy. Now earlier I looked at the I used the length function to see the number of rows total by looking at like the rows of the fiber column and the sugar column. But here, if we just use dim of serial, we can see that this is this is again in the row column format, 43 rows by nine columns. If we just want one or the other, we can do n row of serial. There's also n call, and for short for column, n column of serial. Again, 43 by nine, 43 rows, nine columns. Um, similarly to tail, uh, or sorry, similarly to heads, if you want to look at the last few rows of a data frame there exists a tail function this will by, by default again show the last six uh, rows but we could also change that if we add in a comma five this will now show the last five rows a few more functions now we're going to get more into uh, more utility uh, summary of serial this is a uh, there's a lot of good information here so we can ignore this brand, this first part, this brand um, kind of comma uh, column. So the the reason why it's like this, there's only one type of column name. It's it's a character vector, and there's only one of each. So the summary doesn't really know how to put this in a nicer format. It's just going to say the first couple. We can ignore that. But for the rest of these, since they're numeric, we get minimum, first quartile, meaning the twenty fifth percentile the median or the 50th percentile, the mean, the third quartile or the 75th percentile, and the max. For each of these numeric values, we have the, these stats for the columns. This is a really quick way to get summary statistics from a data frame. Um, there's also a function, maybe use it a little less in the summary, str. I forgot to go to the help file for that. Um, says it'll compactly display the structure of an arbitrary R object. So this is what it does for data frames. It will give you a column by column layout. So each row is a column here. Uh, and it will just give you kind of a description of what's going on, plus a basically using the head kind of function. So we see that brand is a factor, which means kind of a, a, a column of characters with 43 different levels. The levels meaning the 43 different serial brand names um, and it shows the first couple of those now for calories um, and the rest of these so see this earlier we we've only dealt with numerics these are saved as integers um, there's not going to be a huge difference functionally at this level but um, it's it's, it's kind of interesting to see that um, for the decimals th these are just numerics um, but these are integers um, I wouldn't worry too much about that the, there's not really a whole lot um, it's complicated here. Um, for the most part, they're going to be treated the same. So we see that these are these are all numeric columns, even though they're of different types. And we also get to see a preview of what these look like. So this is nice because we can see calories. Um, it's important to see that calories are a pretty high count. Like you're, they're, they're in terms of hundreds, same with sodium. Whereas protein and fat, um, the highest we see here is six. Fat is usually one or two. Um, it's it's both of these are a good quick summary. Um, I find str if you just want a really quick look at this um, you can, this gives you a really quick impression without having to think but, uh, in terms of min max and that sort of thing um, and leading this and just looking at this summary output one more time uh, it's important to note that actually each one of these has a each one of these lines here for each a column variable there's a you can actually get those individually 
per column if you want it. So let's say we want to focus on, on the sugar column. So I'm going to just print that. I'm going to actually store this into a variable called sugar just for convenience. So now we have this, again, this is just a vector. Um, now some of these are, are intuitive. Some of these maybe uh, you might be just introduced to these. So from the mean, we just take mean printed sugar for the median. Again, it's just, I'm gonna do the same thing again. Sorry about that. Take median prints the sugar. Min and max will also work the same. But what I found is really useful, uh, instead of using min and max, you actually have the quantile function. So this will show you the min, 0%, and max, 100%. It will also show you the first and third quartile, the 25%, 75%, and the median, all in one convenient package. That being said, um, if you want everything, including the mean, you may also want to just use summary. Works the same for an individual column.